Hola, maestras. ¿Cómo están? Okay, for those of you who are teaching Spanish 2, I really want to sit on the story aspect. Go ahead and look at Spanish 1 to look at some of the activities and to get the gist of um, a lot of the vocabulary activities are basically of the same genre. You just want to increase the length of the sentence that you expect your students to be able to produce, the um, efficiency of which they're able to kind of have a conversation about the climate, clothing, and what they would put on depending on the climate. All right, so let's talk about Oscar, el oso. You want first day, they're going to read through the story. Second day, they're going to talk about how they would answer the questions of the story, so they'll be filling in the blanks. The third day, they're going to draw the story out. Now, depending on how that went last week with Pepino el Pinguino, you really want to be training them right now. So you walk through the summary together and you draw the pictures together. So you come up together. Okay, ¿qué pasó primero en el cuento? Okay, oso, ¿dónde vive oso? You know, and really walk them through the story and then together come up with the five sentences that they would draw together. All right? The last day is what happens after this. Now, this is kind of a big, hairy assignment or a big, a big activity if this is their first year of Spanish. So, two things can go on in this page. You can either drive that whole thing where you're looking at the same kind of format that the beginning of the story would have, like maybe they meet a friend, or maybe they meet Pepino, the, ping, the pinguino from last week, and you give a little bit of a... They met, they met Patty, they shared bufandas, something about clothing and weather. So that's your target vocabulary that you want to mobilize, and then you want to give them a couple of sentences to continue. Maybe say that the climate changed and the snow melted, and now they're doing, um, now they're warmer and they have to take off their hats. Something fun like that, but kind of follow along in the story. And um, this story is more about the cold as well. So that's page 69, 70, and 71, and 72 of the workbook. Now, on day four, you're going to go back to page 68 in your workbook to do el prognostico. So that is under vocabulary development on day four. So I just wanted to kind of give you a heads up that the story always comes at the end of the workbook clump for any given week. So in this case, you'll actually skip one of the worksheets, do the story all week, and then go back to that worksheet on page 68, which is can you see that? There you go. All right. So let's highlight a couple of the things besides the story. Please call me, email me, any of that good stuff. Contact me if you have any questions about this because this is a little bit more difficult to teach these stories. Go back, reread the instructions that I gave you last week regarding teaching a story because it'll make a whole lot more sense now that you've actually taught a week of it to go back into the directions and go, okay, now I get what she's saying because I've tried to do it. A lot of times you can preview and read the instructions, but it doesn't mean anything because you actually, you haven't even tried to instruct the activity. After you've done the activity, you can go back and go, okay, now that makes a whole lot more sense. All right, so we have the opening, the target verbs that you want to be teaching is ponerse, quitarse, and you'll be using that a ton with the um, climate and the clothing. This is a great review of the clothing, which I already spoke about in the Spanish 1 video. The worksheet, La Clima, does not exist for Spanish 2. We took it out. So you can give them just a sheet of paper, which they can take home on that day. We do want to be sending in some of the work home so that parents can see what we're doing, because the workbooks don't go home, typically. 
get them to do some writing with the climate in the clothing, get them to do some writing. Now, do some charades, have fun with that on day two. Make sure you spend enough time to do the reading component, which is the comprehension sheet, filling in the blank. That takes a little bit of time. When you're doing the story on the second day, you've already kind of taught the story, the kids know what's going on in the story. On the second day, when you're filling in the blank, make sure to have kind of a question answer where you're asking them to come up with the word that goes in there. Now, make sure you write that on the board or make sure that they're spelling the word correctly that they're, in, that they're filling in the blank. Then secondly, you want the whole class to reread the sentence when they filled in the blank. Use this as a pronunciation um, activity. Really sit on pronunciation, you guys. That's how you get kids that really articulate well. It's practice, it's repetition, it's articulating, it's over-articulating, over-emphasizing where the accents are and where the, um, how to enunciate the letters and sounds. Day four, the track four from Learn and Play Spanish. Hey, if you don't have that book, I've got extra copies. Let me know. You can come by the center and pick it up. But that's a fun song that they can kind of act out. Uh, maybe some of your older kids might not want to, but you can definitely have them, like once they've drawn a lot of the articles, see if they can recognize what the um, clothing is that they're hearing in the song. The other thing you can do for your older kids that we'd usually wait till Spanish 3, but it could be nice for your older students. If you have an iPad or a projector on YouTube, they have some great weather forecasts, which I will link on the um, email. And you can actually have them listen to a forecast that talks about weather. Um, we want to be really careful that we preview everything and that it's totally above board and um, appropriate for kids. So obviously stick to the forecast and um, pick somebody who speaks as slow as you're going to find a newscaster or a forecaster speaking. All right? Have a great, fun week. Have a fun week. We're talking about clothing. We're acting stuff out. Really have fun. You're having fun. The kids will have fun. And make sure that you're really working on that delivery. Animate. Get your eyes big. Get excited about what you're doing. Jazz it up. Clap a little bit. Um, get the kids up front. When you do that, Go back to whole group repetition. Have the kids say something. Whole group repetition. Really uh, make the class exciting so that the kids get excited about the language because that's the point. All right, guys. Have a great week. Thanks.